where the old Indian Museum was. This is where the Polo Grounds was, and there's Yankee Stadium. We'll get out here. My name is Terry Baker Mulligan, and I grew up in Harlem in the 1950s and 60s in an area called Sugar Hill. It was an amazing place full of hopes and dreams. It was just the center of, uh, well, certainly black America, but in many ways, um, it, was, it was so newsworthy. We lived uh, in 369 Edgecombe Avenue. It um, was a street that had a wide open view and a big sky like out in Wyoming. And this was a city where space and light is at a premium. So we were fortunate to live where we lived. I lived on the second floor on the left. You can see it in the, in the video. I was born in that room. I was born in that apartment. And I lived there until I was 12. Um, the day we moved, it, it literally nearly broke my heart. I'm not sure I ever got over it as long as I lived in New York. I, I missed living in that street. It was so uh, formative in my life. Right up the street from us, about four or five houses away, um, Thurgood Marshall uh, lived. And everybody in Harlem and everybody in black America, probably everybody in America knew who he was because the news was full of uh, what was happening in the South. The civil rights uh, uh, era was happening. Um, the South was in turmoil. There was bombings and lynchings, and it was right after Emmett Till had been uh, uh, lynched. And Thurgood Marshall was the lead lawyer for the NAACP, and he had just won the, the uh, Little Rock Nine case. So he lived on our block, and that was quite a sensation, quite sensational for us to have him there. One of our neighbors who I did meet in a uh, kind of ambush in the uh, shoeshine parlor was um, Willie Mays. He had just been called up for the New York Giants, the baseball team. They played up the street from us in the Polo, in the polo Grounds before they moved to uh, California. And he played stickball outside with the boys all the time, so I wanted to meet him too. I, I wasn't a shy child, <laughs> and the shoeshine parlor owner didn't like the kids hanging out in there because that's where all the men hung out. But I went in there anyway, and he was sitting in one of the chairs, and I wanted to ask him about stickball, and he, he asked me right off, like, where did you get that big scar on your nose? And, and he asked me all about my scar, <laughs> instead of me asking him all about stickball. One of the boys that I had a crush on was a Frankie Lyman, but all the little girls did. And Frankie lived right up the street from us on Etchcombe Avenue. He was in a group called the Teenagers, and their big hit was White of Fools Fall in Love. And one day, a group of us were sitting out on the park bench in front of my house, and he comes ditty bopping down the street. And he comes up to me and he says, hey gal, like that. And it's like I nearly fell over, and I wanted to say something back like hi or hello or are you Frankie Lyman? I could not get a word out of my mouth. And I, it took too long. He didn't wait. He just kept on going. Yeah, it was an exciting life. We played on the street. Nobody really worried about us. You know, our parents kept an eye on us. So you saw your neighbors. I saw Willie Mays. I saw Thurgood Marshall. Um, Duke Ellington lived in our neighborhood. Joe Lewis lived in our neighborhood. These people had to live there. Black people were not allowed to to uh, into the 60s, even though it was New York City, they were not uh, rented apartments in the downtown areas. That changed radically in the late 60s that began to open up. When I moved away from Harlem in the 70s, a lot of people I encountered had a, a totally monolithic view of the community. Um, it was either a place where famous blacks lived, like um, Langston Hughes or Duke Ellington, or it was where crime was crime infested and drug infested. And there's very little in the middle. You don't hear the, the ordinary story of what life was really like there for ordinary people. So I vowed to write a book. It took me a long time to write it. It's called Sugar Hill, where the sun rose over Harlem. 
and I tell you about the history, uh, my family, just colorful characters, uh, the wonderful life we had. So um, I hope you read the book. <laughs>